All right, good morning, everybody. Um, we are here today to talk about blogs and journals and Blackboard. Um, everybody should be seeing my screen, my course in Blackboard. I'm going to start by going to uh, my tools area in my control panel. And we're going to start by going to blogs. Now, um, the big difference uh, between blogs and journals and the discussion board is that blogs and journals are meant to be a more, uh, if you will, a more intimate way of students presenting information. Um, whether it's self-reflection or talking about a particular topic. Um, the discussion boards are meant to be like an open communication between your students where blogs and journals are supposed to be more uh, introspective, uh, uh, more uh, narrative. Um, so uh, we'll start with blogs. Uh, now blogs as opposed to journals are a little more open to others to comment and whatnot. Um, uh, and uh, we'll start off just by creating a new blog. Uh, so when you go to the blogs area, there's a create blog button. We'll click that. And like everything we do in Blackboard, um, we're going to need to give it a name. Um, and uh, it's just like if we're writing an email, we want to keep it short, succinct, to the point. Uh, so if the blog is supposed to be a, a record of the student's uh, time in the course, uh, uh, we could call it something like, uh, uh, you know, my history journey. Um, if we're in a history course. Um, and then you have an area for your instructions. Uh, we have the standard text editor box. So we could put, uh, we could put um, images in here. Uh, if we need to include videos, we could do that. Uh, uh, and you know, you have a host of different editing tools to format your text. Uh, so in the instructions area, this is where you wanna tell the students how you want them to perform on their blog. Uh, whether uh, we want make entries every week or at your at your leisure, that kind of thing. Um, once you finish with your instructions, then we move down to availability. Uh, and just like everything else we do, we want to either make the blog immediately available or not. Uh, and once we decide which of those we want to pick, we also have the option of using date and time restrictions. So we can assign uh, dates for displaying the blog after a certain date or until a certain date or both. So this is a great way if you have things you want to create ahead of time, but you don't want them to be immediately available to the students, you could set uh, a display after date. You could leave your blog availability set to yes, but if there's a display after date set, then the students won't see it till after that date and time uh, come to be. Uh, likewise, you have a display until and uh, the blog will be available until that date. And once that date comes, the item is unavailable to the students. We get to the participation uh, area, and this is an interesting uh, piece. So the individual to all students option means each student has their own blog and classmates can uh, post comments to it. Uh, so uh, if you allow comments, that is. Uh, so <clears throat> If I'm the student and I'm creating entries, you know, every week I, I create a new entry into my blog. Now, other students can uh, can see it and they and they could read it, but uh, the only thing they can do is make comments to it. Now, uh, but my blog is only my blog; nobody else can post to it. Uh, even the instructor can't post to someone's blog. They can post a comment, but they can't actually make a blog entry in that blog. If I uh, and then if I want to read another student's uh, blog for the same uh, blog assignment, I just go to their blog and look at it and then I can only comment to it. 
um, you can allow anonymous comments. I wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, uh, that would mean uh, people could post comments without um, without anyone knowing who created it. Um, and we want a little accountability, especially in our course. Um, so I generally keep that unchecked. <clears throat> um, we can set the blog type to course. Um, and what that does, instead of each individual student having their own blog, this is a blog that all students can make entries into. Uh, everybody can also comment on the entries. So uh, if we have, this is a great way to do a class uh, project. You could create a, a blog about um, uh, maybe talking about the environments and everybody is posting uh, blog entries about you know their different experiences or what have you. Uh, so almost like a discussion board but not quite because it's really not a conversation so much as people posting reflections. Uh, everybody can make comments on those reflections. Uh, but this blog I'm creating is going to be an individual blog and I'm not going to allow anonymous con uh, comments. Uh, and then we get down to our settings area. Um, the index entries, uh, this is how the blog will be organized for people looking at it. Uh, and I'll show you what this looks like in a little bit, but essentially there are two ways to do this, uh, by month or by week. And all this really does is create a menu of blog entries based by week or month. Uh, and, uh, and that's really all that really does. Uh, it's really self, it's really preference on your own part. Uh, I'm going to uh, do it by week. Uh, this particular blog I'm creating is going to be a weekly assignment. So I wanna make sure that uh, I can uh, browse through everybody's entries very easily. Um, and then you have a couple other options here whether to allow people to edit and delete their entries. Um, I normally would use this, but uh, occasionally you might think, well, I don't want, I want raw, I want initial reaction, that kind of thing. Um, but oh, what all this does is it allows the students who are creating their blog entries to to edit what they've already posted or delete things they've already posted. If you uh, want to make sure that they can't delete some X by accident, something they've already created, then you definitely don't want to use this, uh, this option. And then uh, you have the option to allow users to delete comments. Um, again, this is preference. Um, um, so everybody creates their entries in their blogs and then people can post comments and comments are just, uh, they're sort of like, uh, uh, SMS text messages. They're just, they're shorts. Uh, there's no real formatting. It's just some, uh, some comments about what they've just read. Um, <clears throat> uh, you have to decide whether you want to allow people to po uh, delete, be able to delete something they've posted in a comments. Um, I will make a note on comments. People uh, aren't really able to reply to comments per se. Uh, they're really commenting on the blog, but there's nothing to stop somebody for uh, in their comment by mentioning another comments in the area uh, in case you were wondering about that. Um, I'm not going to allow users to delete comments in this blog I'm creating right now. Um, and then we get to the last piece, whether we want to apply grading to uh, this blog. Uh, by default, it's going to be set to no grading. However, if you want this to be part of the student's grade, then we can select the grade option. And then we have uh, a bunch of different options we usually get when we're choosing whether to grade or not. Uh, we assign a points possible um, uh, at NEC. I know we want to try to keep it at a 100 point scale. Um, and then uh, 
we uh, we have this option to show whether uh, the item needs grading after a certain amount of entries into the blog. So uh, if you're going to have a blog that is ongoing, uh, then you definitely want to set this uh, to have a higher number. You can actually just turn this feature off as well and grade it at any point you want. Uh, it just won't show up at in the needs grading area. Uh, but if we select this, we can say, you know, say your course is a 12 week course. I could say, I want to show my needs grading area after 12 entries have been made. Um, there's nothing to stop you from going in and looking at the blog or even applying a grade ahead of time. Uh, but this is really sort of a, a, a flag for you uh, to kind of help you stay organized uh, as the instructor. Uh, so after, so here, uh, once a student has made 12 blog entries, then I can, then it will show up in my needs grading area. And I, I, uh, I have that little flag to let me know that I should probably go and look at it and, apply a apply a grade um, and then a due date uh, it also optional you don't have to set a due date uh, you can if you you can if you want and if you do set a due date uh, it doesn't stop the student from uh, making blog entries post date uh, all it does is mark the blog as late if uh, the student posts uh, after the date the due date um, again, that's a uh, sort of a visual cue for you as the instructor to know that the student has posted it past the due date. Uh, I'm not going to apply a due date to this because I want my blog to be ongoing and I don't want any students to feel pressured to get it all done by a certain time. And then lastly, we can apply a rubric. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is a good option if you want to apply a writing rubric to the blogs, if you want the students to really apply some uh, some writing skills that they're learning in the course. Uh, uh, again, if you've uh, used the rubric tool before, uh, you can select a rubric from your library that you've already got created. You can create a new rubric if you wish. Uh, we are trying to create a standard set of rubrics for everybody to use, um, and that's sort of an ongoing uh, project, but it's always a good idea to look at your uh, rubric library if you want to use one. Uh, if you already have some created, you might also see uh, ones that we have created for you. I'm going to apply this writing rubric to this assignment. And I'll submit that. Um, and now, because I applied a rubric, uh, one of the things that the system automatically does is apply the rubric's point value to my grade points possible. Uh, you can override that if you want, but if you're using a rubric, you should try to stick to the uh, to the points that come with the rubric to keep, to uh, so just so you stay uh, you know, consistent for your students. Uh, if you do apply a rubric, uh, you do have some options for that. You can remove it by clicking this little red X button, uh, and that'll just unapply the rubric to the assignment. You can view the rubric if you need to be reminded of what it looks like. Uh, and then you can also edit it. Uh, so from here directly, we'll open up the rubric interface and, and go and edit it if we need to. Um, uh, then the option to use it for the grading or we could uh, use it for secondary evaluation. So uh, by default, it's going to be used for grading, which is where the points possible comes in. Um, but we can say we're going to use this for secondary evaluation and this, um, this essentially tells the students that um, while the rubric is part of the what you'll be looking at as far as the student's assignment, it's not really the core value uh, for where your, your, the points are coming from for the assignments. Um, I am going to use this for grading. Um, you can also apply a secondary rubric if you want. Uh, 
to this assignment just by adding another rubric. Um, and then lastly, the show rubrics to the students by default it's set to no, but if I'm grading the students, I'd like to them to know how they're being, uh, how this, this being graded. Uh, so you can say, yes, I want to show the rubric to the students, uh, and I can show it with the scores uh, that will be uh, applied. You can also show them the rubric without the scores if you want them to be a little more on their toes and just go for the uh, um, the higher achievements, um, then uh, you could use that option. And then you also have the option to only show them the rubric after the assignment has been graded. Um, I'm going to say yes with the rubric scores. Uh, those are all our options for creating the blog. Um, once we've done that, we just come down to the lower right and we submit all our settings. And now we have a, uh, a blog created. And this one's called My History Journey. Um, and like most things um, we have in our blog area, we have uh, some options we can do here. Uh, if we've created a blog and we've decided we don't want it, so we want to get rid of it, we can select it by clicking its checkbox and clicking the delete buttons that show in the top or bottom of the area. Um, and you can also quickly make uh, blogs available or unavailable by checking them and using the availability buttons that show in the top and bottom as well. Uh, and like everything, we have a uh, menu associated with that blog. Uh, by hovering over it, you get these little chevrons, you click on them, and you have a few options. You can open the blog, you can edit its settings. If we edit the settings, we come right back to the edit area that we were just in, um, and we can make changes to the settings. And once we're finished, we just need to submit them. Um, and you can also, from this menu, delete the individual blog. Um, one of the nice uh, things you get when you're looking at the blogs area is uh, you can see how many entries have been made uh, in a blog. <clears throat> Here I have one that's already been created called Life at NEC. And I can see there's been three entries into this blog. So I'm going to go and see what is going on in here. Um, and here I am, I'm looking at the blog area. Now, right now it's looking at my blog as the instructor. Uh, so when you create a blog, yes, the, the instructor can also uh, add blog entries. Um, and uh, especially if you want to, you know, sort of lead by example uh, or something like that, uh, or try to get your students thinking about things, you can also create blog entries yourself. I can scroll through the different users uh, who've posted by using these left and right toggles next to these names on the right hand side in this column. I can also click this drop down uh, under my name. And I can see who's posted and how many times. Um, so, uh, and optionally, I can check this box to say show empty blogs. And when I click that, I can see all of my students who, ha who haven't uh, made uh, entries. Uh, you can see by, by looking at each user's name, they have a number, and that number is how many entries they've made in the blog. Um, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm just going to look at the people who have. So I'm going to go look at Jane's uh, blog entries. <clears throat> and uh, so we'll see here on the right-hand side, we have our index. And our index is being indexed by week. So this is for the week of July 26th to August 1st. So all entries that the student made for that week would show up in this, uh, in this area. And then if they made more entries on another week, uh, there'd be another uh, another week listed and entries for that week as well. 
and I mentioned this because if there's a lot of entries for a week, you can, if you don't need to look at them, you can collapse that area by clicking these little plus minus buttons and hiding them. And then you can bring it back just by clicking it again. Um, it's just a quick way for navigation. And this is what the uh, indexing by month or week uh, setting does. Uh, this is by week. If it was by month, we just see, you know, August, July, uh, June, etc. So uh, over to the left, I see the date that the student posted. Um, the the name uh, that they used for their uh, heading for their blog post. Uh, I can see it's posted by the student at a particular date and the exact time that it was submitted. Uh, their entry is pretty short, sweet. Uh, that's their first blog entry. And I can see there's been comments added. Uh, uh, right below here comments there's one so I'm going to click that to open up that area um, and I see that the student Rob Hawk said there hey great entry here's my comments um, I could again I could see the date and time that they posted that um, I have the option of deleting a student's comment um, and it's there for, uh, you know, in case there are inflammatory things going on uh, or, uh, or maybe you just feel that the comment was unnecessary and you don't want it to be there, uh, but you can delete comments that students make. Uh, likewise, you can comment on a blog uh, post yourself by clicking this comment button. Um, And I'm saying, you know, great post. Thanks for sharing. And you can see this is a, this isn't our standard text editor box. It is a very simple, plain text. There's no real uh, there's no real editing here. You can't add emojis or anything like that. And it's just simply just words. Um, uh, and then I'm going to add that comment and. We can see it's not really a discussion, it's just people posting comments. Um, uh, and let me, and then uh, I know I saw another student had some uh, posts, so I'm gonna go to their area. Again, we here we see that they've made two posts, um, both in the same week. Um, and uh, here are their entries. Not much has been said. I see this second entry has some comments. I'm gonna go look at it. Oh, Jane responded saying how exciting and scary. Um, so that is, uh, and this, this view we're looking at as the instructor is exactly the same view students see, uh, except for uh, they can't, you know, uh, they can't delete anything. Um, they can just look or comment. Um, now, we've got our blog set up. There are a couple of ways we can let students get to the blogs. Uh, they can go to their course tools area and look for blogs here it is right here and click on that and it would bring them to the blogs area um, but uh, that's sort of a long way to go about it and it doesn't it doesn't put the individual blog right there in the student's view uh, a better way I would think to do this uh, would be go to your course content area and uh, we're gonna, it's going to be like we're building some sort of content, but we're gonna to come to the tools dropdown and we're going to say blogs. And we can link to the blogs page, which would just link to uh, the blogs tool area and be a quick link for the students just to click and see all the blogs that they need to post to. Um, but if we only have one blog, we can just link to a specific blog um, and we can select the blog we want to link to. Uh, in this case, I'm selecting life at NEC and uh, actually I'm gonna select my new one that I've just created my history journey and I'll hit next. Um, 
And then we were asked, what, what do we want the link name to be? I'm just going to leave it by default the same as the blog name. Uh, we can put some additional text in. Um, maybe we want to uh, reiterate instructions or we just want to put an image there. Uh, we could do that. Uh, again, we have an availability area, and this is for the link, not the tool. Um, I'm just going to leave it set to default to be immediately available. Uh, you can set the track views option, which appears sometimes, uh, and this is a great way for tracking how many times uh, students have clicked on the link uh, to go and look at the, uh, the assignment. I'm going to submit. And then in my area here, I'll scroll down because it appears at the bottom, but we see we have a link right to uh, the blog I've just created. And when I click on it, we come right to the blog area. Um, that is the blog tool. Uh, now the blog tool is meant to be a public facing uh, uh, tool uh, and it's, you know, uh, student uh, posting entries, uh, and you know everybody commenting to them now the journal is a little more introspective and and most of the time it's going to be something that might not be uh public facing uh, meaning the only person who can read the journal entries are the user the student and yourself as the instructor uh, so i'm going to come to my course menu i'm going to go to my tools area and i'm going to go to journals um, and I'm going to create a new journal. Now, a lot of this is going to be very similar to blogs. Uh, the tools are very similar. Um, we want to give a name. Um, I'm going to say self-reflections. Um, again, you want to post instructions. Uh, you have the text editor, so you can add images, videos, audio files. Um, you can also include uh, attachments if you have uh, some sort of document you want them to read through. Um, <clears throat> and then we set our availability, just like in our blog. We have displayed until and after. Um, and, uh, and then we have our index area. Uh, and just like in blogs, we want to say whether we want the, uh, the assignment to be, the journal to be indexed by month or week. I'm going to leave this to month. Um, and then our options, do we want to let the users edit and delete their entries? Uh, and do we want people to be able to delete comments? Um, and do we want to permit course users to view the journal. And this is a big difference here between the journal and the blog, but the blog is automatically public viewed. Uh, the journal is not. Um, you have to allow other users in the course to be able to read the journal, and that is an option if you want to take it. Um, if you do, then uh, other students will be able to comment on a student's journal entry. Um, uh, and all you have to do if you want that to happen is check this box. Uh, I'm going to leave it unchecked because I want this to be uh, a personal thing between me and the student and not anybody else. Um, and again, we have our grading options just like our blogs area. Um, do you know how many times do we want a, po a post to be made before it needs to be graded, um, a due date, whether we want to add a rubric or not. Um, and then once you finish all that, you just submit. Um, oh, I forgot my points possible here. Let me put that in. Uh, and you submit your settings. And here we have uh, our journal all set up. Uh, self-reflections. Uh, again, we have our different buttons to allow us to delete or make available. Uh, and we have the little submenu which allows us to open, edit, and delete the journal. Uh, the, one of the things it does here under this visibility column, you can see that it's set to private, which means other students cannot view it. Um, if uh, it's said public, then that means other students can, in the course can look at the journal entries that other students make. Um, uh, and then uh, just like uh, 
just like uh, our blogs, uh, you can create a link to a journal that you've created in your course content area um, by going to the tools, drop down again, uh, and finding journals. And then you can link to the journal, select it, and say next. And then uh, do we want the link name to be the same as the journal name? I'm going to leave it the same. You could add some extra text if you want. And then you can set your availability options, whether you want it to be the views to be tracked or not. And uh, you submit it. I'll scroll all the way down here. And we see now we have a journal, uh, a link right here. Um, and again, I, I like to point out that of every tool, every uh, thing you create in your content area in Blackboard, uh, it generally has a, a different kind of icon uh, associated with it depending on what it is. Tests have a certain icon, assignments have another. Uh, blogs have sort of a, a comment bubble uh, with a piece of paper and journals uh, look sort of like a notebook. Um, it's just a visual cue to understand uh, for the users uh, what they're looking at. That is blogs and journals in a nutshell. Um, uh, any questions? Well, if there are no questions, then uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, uh, I will say that uh, we try to present these webinars a couple times a week. Uh, so, uh, you know, take a look at the, uh, the list uh, of the webinars being offered. Uh, and if uh, you have any technical questions or issues you need answers to, you can always feel free to email me at rhawk at nec.edu. I also have uh, sort of office drop-in hours on Tuesday evenings at 6 and thir uh, Thursday mornings at 10. Um, and if you need help with uh, guidance on, uh, on the best practices for setting up your course, you can always reach out to our instructional designers. They're always happy to help. Otherwise, thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you another day.